So the first season of Hello Tomorrow on Apple TV Plus just wrapped and I have very mixed feelings about it. I wanted to absolutely love this show as I think the premise is absolute genius and it definitely feels like a true Apple TV Plus show in terms of being a real slow burn and then just really coming into its own by the end of this show. And I do actually think they wrapped it up pretty well as if they don't ever return to it. I do feel like it does wrap everything up in a pretty satisfying way but also leaves enough cliffhangers to definitely roar into second season. Now let's go through the premise first, then I'll talk about the characters, then I'll talk about the ending. So I think it's a really unique show, especially as it's a bit of a science fiction comedy drama about an expert salesperson who is just able to blow you off your feet, who travels from town to town with his crew selling timeshares on the moon. Honestly, I think this premise is just so, so, so clever. And I think it's really unique as well, how everything is beginning to unravel when he comes to a town where he finds his long lost son. And this understandably affects everything in terms of his personal relationships, his professional relationships, and where all of his priorities lie as well, while still ensuring that, you know, he is able to have the gift of the gab and is able to talk his way out of any situation. And I think it's really cool as this has definitely got a bit of a unique identity, as it's a bit of a retro futuristic show, as it's got futuristic technology and robots and AI and all this really, really clever stuff that's helping humans, whilst the aesthetic and the look and feel definitely feels really 60s, very 50s even. And surprisingly, this blend actually works really, really well. And going back to the salesman tactic, I think is really brilliant as it definitely communicates the power and the importance of being a really brilliant salesperson as you are able to convince anyone to do anything, you're able to sell them a dream, you are able to get out of any situation even though the things that you are saying are actually a lie. So I actually think this is a really good lesson as people really need to be careful about who they give their money to, especially when people are coming across as being really charming, as you may well not expect it, but there could be a con artist underneath that. And you are really able to see firsthand with a number of different characters in this show, how a lot of people's lives are being destroyed because of this fake bright side company. You see a number of vulnerable people who are just giving their life savings away for this dream that they have been sold. And in some ways it's really, really creepy actually, as this they then feel is the only thing that they are now living for. So it's just so destructive and it definitely feels like an Apple TV production as it has a lot of severance vibes to it and of course the main lead actor is also from the morning show so they definitely are keeping their talent within their house and I think this show has a number of really interesting themes for example workplace jealousy which you get to see from a number of different characters perspectives in the beginning I thought it was really interesting as a number of characters were really jealous of the new kid Joey even though you know he wasn't as good as the other people and they were such better sales people but they were a little bit intimidated by this young blood that's kind of stepping into their potential commissions and then speaking of Joey you get to see a lot of betrayal that he is then exhibiting against his father I mean you can somewhat see where he's coming from as he does see his father as a bit of a crooked guy and then when he even discovers that you know he is his dad in the first place he really does want to destroy him but I love the fact that you know he does have a pure of heart underneath all of that and he does really want to have a relationship with his dad even if it is a really reluctant thing and I also think is really really powerful in terms of you know being really careful for the things that you actually wish for as you may well get it as Jack at the end of this series is actually getting his own rocket and he is able to just send people to the moon even if there's no timeshares waiting there for them and on that point I love the fact that Jack always just seems to somehow get away with it and by the end of the first season he is going to even get loads of investors money so he is just able to just talk his way out of so many different situations and is able to just acquire so much he really is a lot actually like these other founding billionaires and it really does show that you know the crazy ones are the ones that are actually able to make it as they are just so determined to make their vision a reality so now let's go through all the characters one by one so Jack is the ultimate sales guy and he's just so charming you are just really liking this guy you're really with him I think he is able to carry this show really really well the actor who plays him is absolutely brilliant firstly he's a really accomplished actor and I just feel like he just brings so much to this role and you're just able to just eat up everything that he says as he is just so convincing I loved it when he's even on stage versus also when he's in a one-to-one -one situation he is always just 
is able to charm anyone he's talking to. And like I said, he's able to get out of all these crazy situations, especially where a number of people just want to take him down. He is able to get away with it. And I loved it when you go back a couple of years prior to all of this stuff taking place and he was just riddled with rejection, but he didn't let this stop him as he was just so determined, like I said, to make his vision a reality. And in some ways, I think he's actually a pretty inspiring guy, even though he does go about things the wrong way. So you definitely shouldn't do that. But I think in terms of his grit and determination, I think that at least is impressive. And I think it really does show that, you know, if you tell one lie, you then have to tell 10 lies to get away with that. And then you have to tell 100 lies to get away with that. And you can kind of see this spiraling, especially at the middle half of the series. And as impressive as Jack is as a character, you can see that he is a real human character as he is very flawed. And, you know, he just couldn't take being a father as he felt he wasn't good enough because of his own father's relationship. And you then see that this is the reason that he walked out on Joey and his wife. And then he's kind of trying to remedy it all by the end of this series. So I think Jack is such a brilliant character and he really does try to make up for lost time as he then wants to be a true father figure to Joey. And he really does give Joey a thirst for life. As you could tell, Joey wasn't living up to his full potential when he was working in the supermarket. And I thought it was really, really clever how, you know, this does come full circle when Joey really does show that he is his father at the end of the day. As he was able to convince his previous employer to buy timeshares on the moon as well. I thought that was a brilliant moment. And in the first half of this series, I love the moments between Jack and Joey as you can see that they are a really brilliant pair and they do work really, really well together. But then Joey really wants to screw his dad over. And thanks to Jack's mum warning him, he was able to realize that, you know, Joey may well try to screw me over. So he was able to use his mind control sales tactic ability to win Joey over as well. And I wonder if they are actually going to get their happily ever after ending. Herb and Betty were a really interesting pair. I loved Herb's workplace jealousy against Joey right in the beginning of this series. And then all of his marital issues. And of course he was the most loyal person as he is the only one that's standing by Jack by the end of this series. But Herb Duffy isn't a perfect guy as he was able to screw over Myrtle's life completely which really did send her on the warpath and really did make her life spin out of control. And I thought it was really shocking actually how you know she is so determined to now screw all of these guys over but then she is still determined to go back to the moon as well. So they're able to win her over. And I think Betty really does help her out on a number of different occasions. Similarly, Eddie was always threatened by Joey right in the beginning, even though he really had no need to, and was only ever really having Fred after him, causing him excruciating amounts of pain. I think Shirley was definitely getting the most screen time out of all three of these characters. And she really was so loyal to Jack and really does show that she has got a strong business brain on her as well. As even right at the end of this series she was able to make a lot of good decisions i was able to make a lot of money alongside eddie as well even though they definitely did do it in a bit of a crooked way so i thought the final episode was good i was expecting a little bit more from it but i love the fact that you know they did actually send a rocket to the moon even if there's no timeshares they're waiting for them all of the characters pretty much that you have seen across this series did come back and were packed into that rocket ship that was being sent up. And to Jack and Joey's credit, they did try to prevent all of these guys going up. But of course, as fate would have it, these guys were destined to go up there. And of course, there were a couple of evil people there trying to ensure that this happens. And it was really crazy as Herb and Betty are also on the rocket ship. So I wonder what will happen when they get out of the moon and see that, you know, there are no houses there waiting for them. And I thought it was really interesting how Fred was all also on that rocket ship and you know Eddie didn't fully kill him but it dumped his body over there so that's going to be crazy when he wakes up and when he eventually comes back down to earth I'm sure he will continue to just ruin Eddie's life but Fred wasn't the only person who woke up as of course Joey's mum and Jack's ex-wife also woke up and they were trying to create you know their perfect family environment as she was clearly still suffering from amnesia but she was just remembering that you know maybe my life wasn't so perfect with Jack I did love the fact that you know Jack and Joey did make up by the end of it but I wonder uh, if Jack will continue to get away with it, especially as he's now got the investors mega budget boost. So maybe now he actually can make all of these timeshares on the moon a reality. So, you know, overall, I did enjoy Hello Tomorrow. I was expecting a lot more from it, especially as the concept was so good and I didn't feel like the execution was as gripping as it should have been. I did love all of the futuristic technology and I feel like in the first episode, they definitely maximized this. As it was progressing, it was just a bit average and it definitely had a lot more of a retro vibe to it. And whilst the storyline was pretty engaged, I just wanted a lot more from that as well and I just think the characters, the visuals, everything just could have been so much more polished and so much more stronger but you know it does kind of work and if you really enjoy Apple TV's typical type of productions then I'm sure you would have absolutely loved Hello Tomorrow but now I'd love to hear from you. What did you think of it? What did you think of the
the ending do you think we'll get a season two let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below and i look forward to seeing you in my next video